Good morning, welcome to the Art Money Talk. My name is Mo. Today's question is how to make money as an artist. There's so many ways to make money as an artist. I don't even know where to start with. As an artist, you can take a full-time employment, such as an art teacher. You can paint and sell your own art as an independent professional. You can also choose to sustain yourself with side hustles or small gigs from time to time for pocket money. Today, we'll just stick to one way. is how to make art, sell art, and uh, make a living as an independent, self-employed, fun art professional. And let's leave the side gigs for another day in another video. Here I have put together a list of five different ways to make money as an artist. Number one, selling original artworks. When I say original, it doesn't mean your work has to be one of its own kind or like the world has never seen, so unique. I didn't mean original versus plagiarism or original versus counterfeits. I mean original versus reproductions of your own artwork. And let's see what the law has to say about what is an original works of art. Ta-da! Let's read the law text. Under the French law, the first 12 casts of a bronze edition are original works of art. Starting with the 13th cast, they are reproductions and must bear this label in a visible place on their exterior. It applies to sculptures, but it also applies to other mediums, not only the machine-assisted productions, but also handmade processes. So if you are painting an acrylic painting and you have this layout, this design, up to 12 identical paintings, they are still considered original works of art. If you're painting 1,000 copies, no, they are no longer considered as original artworks. If you're living in a different location, in a different state or different country, perhaps different laws apply or there's no law about it, please consult to a legal professional if you wish and take my advice with a grain of salt. A grain of salt like this. Number two, selling art merchandising. Uh, art merchandising can range from a t-shirt or mugs with your art printed on it to a limited edition art prints or signed posters. There's not really a clear boundary in some cases between uh, artwork to uh, merchandising. And I have made a video about merchandising another day, so please check it out if you wish. Today I'll just talk about two different kind of ways to make art merchandising. If you go to a museum and you see those uh, mugs or notebooks with art printed on it, those are produced in advance. If you wish to produce art merchandising in advance, you have to design them, invest money in them, and manage the inventory, the shipping. It's a lot of trouble for a very few bucks. Perhaps it's not worth it. However, the good point is you can have the merchandising near you so you can carry it around to some events and you can promote your own artwork with the merchandising and leave a piece to imagine a potential collector as a name card so you are increasing the chance of them purchasing an artwork in the future. Alternatively, you can use print-on-demand services. They are also called POD. So they are a lot more ecological, economical, they're more efficient, there are many advantages, and you don't have to invest money in advance. And very little time as well. You just need to upload an artwork. Everything else is automatically carried out by machines. The downside is you will not be able to uh, actually touch this merchandising yourself. You cannot you know, inspect them for quality control. You cannot sign your name on it to give a personal touch. So it's a bit cold. It's a bit too mechanic, perhaps, for your taste. And POD services are mainly working in the US. If you're outside of the US, there are very few POD service providers. For example, I'm in Europe and there are a lot less POD service providers and they have a very limited selection of products to choose from. Number three, commissioned works. Most of my emerging artist friends, they just love commissioned works. Not only because the fact it pays the bill, but also there is a few good factor. People are giving you cash. They're paying you before your work, before your work is even produced. That means there's an enormous trust in there. And usually they're a big fan of your art. However, be careful not to be trapped in a commissioned work golden cage. If you're spending a lot of time doing commissioned works, you are risking your art. You're risking a, a career as an artist. Uh, because if you are just spending time on getting paid to do what you are told to do, so what's the difference between you and uh, a designer? 
I like to call designer to, you know, <laughs> some artists just to like provoke them. You know, I have nothing against designers myself. I was trained to be a designer. I have nothing, absolutely nothing against designers, but for some artists, being called a designer is an enormous insult. So I like to just to provoke them to get their attention. I'm just trying to make a point that we all have 24 hours a day. If you spend your time on doing what other people tell you to do, you don't have time for your research, for your own skills, for your own uh, development of your own art. So if you're not spending enough time to make art, then it doesn't make you an artist, right? Number four, licensing. Perhaps you have heard about iStock Photo or other kind of uh, stock photo brands like uh, Getty Images, but right now they are the same thing. If you're a photographer, perhaps you have already done this. So basically you are licensing other people to use your artwork or your image or your photograph and you get paid for that. It does not stop you from selling your original works of art to a collector and you can still you know, have the full control of your own original artwork you know, at hand. So of course there are risks of you know, people are using you know, a, the download uh, for malicious, like evil purposes. But also people can break your home, you know, take your artwork as well. So you cannot really you know, stop bad people from doing bad things. There is a big opportunity out there because uh, more and more people are purchasing digital art frames. And in those frames they are constantly just displaying different artworks. And it's a great way to get your artwork displayed in the homes and office and you know, different occasions and getting paid at the same time by licensing your artwork to those digital platforms. Number five, making money out of your fans. If you have 40, 50,000 followers on Instagram, you can already start making money. If you have a lot of traffic, you can get brand deals and make money with Google AdSense. If you have a good engagement, you can crowdfund your monthly expenses on Patreon or finance a special project on Kickstarter. You may ask, what's the difference between traffic and engagement? My understanding is traffic is a lot of people like you, engagement is people like you a lot. Now you have heard five different ways to make money as an artist. What do you think? Have you tried one of them? So let me know how it works out for you. Give a comment below and thank you for watching. See you in the next video.